Hello and welcome to worship here at Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Santa Monica. Today we are celebrating the fourth Sunday in Lent. Thank you for gathering with us. We'll begin worship with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in the snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things, and for sins only you know, forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O oh God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Come take a seat and join me for today's children's sermon. We are in the season of Lent and the color is purple, the color of royalty, which helps us to remember that Jesus is our King. But Jesus did not wear a golden crown upon his head. No, Jesus wore a crown of thorns as he was led to the cross. In the gospel today, we hear, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We know that in the waters of baptism, we are given new life. We die to sin and death. And we are marked with that cross of Christ forever. Jesus is the light of the world. Come to save us all. And that light of Christ burns so bright within you too. So go out into the world sharing God's love and God's light. Let's say a prayer, friends. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we give you thanks for Christ, the light of the world, who comes to save us all. Help us to remember our baptisms every day as we wash in the waters. Make us new, make us pure and holy, and help us as we journey to the cross with Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. first reading is from Numbers chapter 21. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. People spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of the Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food, no water, and we detest this miserable food. That is the manna that the Lord sent. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned against, I speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent, set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 2. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of the world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of this grace, in kindness toward us and in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. 
is a gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand and to be our way of life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It was an experiment in my eighth grade science class. We were to set a white sheet out on the ground and in the center of that sheet, place a light of some sort. This was to happen at night, and then as we would wait and watch, the insects would come, drawn to that light. We were to capture them and pin them to a board and discern their scientific classifications and then bring our work into class. It was an assignment that at the time I loved, though now I think about all those poor insects that were at the hands of my pinning. But it was amazing to realize how many winged creatures and bugs lived in my backyard. It was wild to watch how they were drawn to the light. We are drawn to the light. We are not those ones who turn away and remain in the darkness. The light of Christ shines, and we are gathered together because we are drawn to that light, like moths to a lantern, like people to the beach on a beautiful sunny day, like a cat drawn to that light shining on a floor as a great place to take the perfect nap. Like flowers tilt their heads to follow the light during the day, 
like a plant who grows sideways if necessary so it can find its way to the light. We are gathered because of the light of Christ. She was so full of love, my mother. She had such love, it was unconditional, it seemed. The kind of love that's a soft landing place where you can be held and kept safe in the midst of a stormy time in life. Like one day when I was doing clinical pastoral education and I'd had a really difficult on-call shift. And I arrived home, and she met me at the door, and I fell into her arms and cried and cried, and she held me safe. Her love was the kind of love that created safe places for our friends who might have difficult relationships with their parents at home. Or love that let an ADHD child play with her arm flab to keep him engaged during vacation Bible school. Or a story I love about how in her work as an educational aide at an elementary school, she would meet a young person who was scared to go to school every morning and walk him from the gate where he said goodbye to his parents all the way to his classroom. It was the kind of love that encouraged people to be the goofballs that they are. One summer, my then boyfriend, now husband, David, came to visit, and I had to go to work sometimes, and I would come home and find all of the goofy things they'd gotten up to, like making a board game out of the box of a vacuum cleaner, or walking across this sticky tile floor that came because they'd had a grapefruit juicing party. My mom was full of love, and people were drawn to her because of that love. For God so loved the world, it said. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. God has a love that is for the whole world. A love that loved us so much as to come and be with us. Emmanuel, God with us. A love that was so deep and so wide that it stretched its arms out on a cross. The greatest love is this, that one lays down one's life for one's friends. God is so full of that love, and we are drawn to that love, gathered into one by that amazing love of God. Like a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wings, we are gathered into one because of God's love. A young woman was visiting a friend in rural Minnesota. Word got out that she was a doctor, and the townspeople began to seek her out. You see, they didn't or couldn't drive the two hours to the local, med the nearest medical facility. And soon, this young woman started to stock her car with the items that she would need to care for the townspeople on her visits. They continued to seek her out for healing, and eventually she worked with a big city hospital to open a community clinic in that place so that people could be cared for closer to home. People were drawn there by the promise of healing. It happened with Jesus in just this way as well. Crowds gathered at the door, people following him, shouting at him in the streets for healing, even some friends lowering their friend who needed healing down through a roof so that that friend could access Jesus and his healing. <coughs> but there was more healing to come. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, it says, 
so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Like when the Israelites were wandering in the desert, plagued by the snakes, and they looked at the bronze statue of a snake held up before them and were healed. <coughs> Maybe I need to be healed, too. Anyway, the Israelites wandered in the desert, and they looked at that statue, and they were healed. The lifting up of Jesus in that way heals us as well. The lifting up of Jesus on the cross, yes. The lifting up of Jesus in the resurrection, yes. The lifting up of Jesus in the ascension, yes. Through all these times, when Jesus is lifted up, we are healed. From feeling alone in our hurt, from the weight of our sins, from the fear of death, with the hope of unexpected new life, and the knowledge that our advocate our healer is at work in heaven and on earth. We are gathered into one by the healing we are offered. Gathered into the one by the healing we receive in the name of Jesus. I wonder. I wonder what it was that gathered you to Jesus in the first place. Was it the light that drew you, the light of truth, the light of justice, the light that shines in the darkness? Or was it love that drew you, a God who knows you and loves you just as you are? Was it the healing that gathered you in, the healing from sin, from death, from fear, from desolation? What was it that gathered you into the body of Christ, the church? And who are we gathered with? Is it just that we are gathered into one as this congregation? or as Lutherans in Southern California, or as Lutherans as part of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, or as Christians, or are we in fact part of the whole world that God has gathered, that God continues to gather with love and mercy into the arms of God? And if the intent of God is really to save the whole world, what role are we to play as the body of Christ in the world to help that become reality? What are we to do who have already been gathered in to one? What are we to do so that the world knows it is saved through God's love. I was reading ahead in our daily devotional for this season of Lent, and I came across this piece of wisdom. It said, so what is love? Love is God's love in us, turned inside out. Love is God's love in us, turned inside out. Light is God's light in us, turned inside out. Healing is God's healing in us, turned inside out. Our work, our calling, what we are gathered into one to do and be in this world is to turn the love of God inside us out so that we can share it with the world, to turn the light of God inside us out 
so that we can share it with the world to turn the good gifts of the healing we've received in God and turn it inside out to share it with the world. I wonder, I wonder how you see us as the body of Christ, as Mount Olive Lutheran Church, doing this work. How are we turning God's love inside out and sharing it with the world? How are we turning God's light inside out and sharing it with the world? How are we turning God's healing inside out and sharing it with the world? And how is God calling us anew in new and different ways to share that love, to share that light, to share that healing we have so graciously received? Friends, we are gathered. We are gathered into one by light, by love, by healing. We are gathered into one to join together, to then be that light, to be that love, to be that healing of God in this world. God, give us the courage. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Gracious God, your love unites. Give vision to the global church and foster cooperation and mission. Increase interreligious understanding and ecumenical dialogue. Make your church a sanctuary for all fleeing persecution, disaster, and war. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, your love enlivens. Restore balance to the earth's fragile habitats. Preserve wilderness lands, rainforests, and wildlife. Cleanse oceans and rivers. Make us good stewards of the earth. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Righteous God, your love liberates. We give thanks for those who courageously witness to your liberating love. Free all people from the evils of racism, religious strife, and hatred. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Merciful God, your love heals. Care tenderly for all whose loved ones perish from pandemic diseases in every nation. Strengthen health care workers, first responders, and caregivers. Relieve all who live with chronic illness and pain. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Incarnate God, your love enlightens. Open our hearts and minds to fresh understandings of our faith. Deepen our love for you and for one another. Teach us to pray for our enemies. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Abiding God, your love saves. Those who died in the faith are made alive in Christ. We give thanks for your promise that we also will be raised to newness of life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. A few announcements about ministry here in this place. We continue to focus on this theme in Lent of being gathered into one. As you can see, our weaving continues to come to life as we gather these different threads into one art piece. We also continue to do our daily devotionals through the Gathered Into One Lenten devotional. We, this week, on March 13th, have an opportunity to gather into one and even larger group as we host an interfaith iftar. An iftar is the meal that Muslim people celebrate every day of Ramadan as they break the fast. They fast from sunup to sundown, and then they have a large meal, and they've invited us to participate in one of those meals. We'll gather around to learn and grow together. We hope you can join us. We'll start that at 6.30 p.m. on March 13th. That's a Wednesday, and we will have a wonderful time. That takes the place that week of dinner church. But if you've not yet experienced dinner church and you would like to, we have one more week to try that, that following week. We hope you'll join us at 6 p.m. 
for dinner and worship around the table. Take a note of all of the upcoming Holy Week opportunities. Palm Sunday is March 24th. We celebrate Maundy Thursday at 7 p.m. And Good Friday service will be from noon until 3 p.m. Then we'll have Easter worship at 7 a.m. on the beach and 9 a.m. here in the sanctuary. We'll hope you'll join us for that holiest of weeks. Thank you for the ways that you support and engage this ministry of Mount Olive. I'm very thankful for the ways that you generously support through your offerings. If you'd like links to give this day, take a look at the description for this video and you will find easy access to those ways to give. Thank you. Draw near to all. 
all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Share your bread. Thanks be to God.